I invite you on a 30-minute excursion to the Mona Lisa Museum, located in an ordinary private home in Melbourne, Australia. You will see one of the largest collection of objects depicting Mona Lisa and learn interesting facts related to the painting and Leonardo da Vinci. Good morning, Fayina. Before we move on to your collection, I want to ask you a question that all viewers will surely ask you too. Why in fact Mona Lisa? The question is of course interesting. Well, first of all, I want to say that all my life I have been fond of collections. And then one case sparked my interest in Mona Lisa. In 1973, I went to Moscow on vacation after finishing my first year at university. It was a present from my parents to me. At the time, an exhibition of Leonardo da Vinci's painting, Mona Lisa, was held in Moscow. The exhibition in Moscow was not planned, but the director of the Pushkin Museum, Irina Ant Antonova, found out that after Tokyo, the plane would fly through Moscow, and she came to Yekaterina Futsova and literally persuaded her to land the plane in Moscow, and an exhibition of the painting was arranged in her museum. The plane landed in Moscow, the painting got to the museum, and an incredible amount of insurance was paid. 100 million rubles. As you know, it was very difficult to surprise Soviet people with queues. However, the queues that were in the museum at that time were simply unprecedented. They stretched out for several blocks. To get into the museum, you had to come to the museum in the evening, stand in line for six to seven hours, and also in the morning before the opening of the museum and only then you could get into the museum. Only 10 to 15 seconds were allowed for the viewing of the painting because it was impossible to stop. Some shouted, goodbye forever Mona Lisa. Others who were younger were more optimistic and shouted, Mona Lisa, see you soon. I could not get to this exhibition. It was taken away literally on the eve of my arrival. The fact that I did not get to the exhibition gave birth to a dream in my mind, to see this painting. And so, as they say, my dream met with my passion for collecting. And this is how my collection was born. My husband and I began to travel a lot around the world and I started bringing copies of exhibits for my collection from different parts of the world. Surprisingly, I found such exhibits even in Turkey. If you look at this picture here, it has three parts. The picture is very simple. It is not the Louvre Mona Lisa. If you've noticed, this is a completely different 16th century painting by an unknown artist. I read that this is the only copy that was made during Leonardo's lifetime and it is now in the Prada Museum in Madrid. This is also an interesting exhibit. Here, the Mona Lisa's dress is made of little crystals. I don't know if that's visible on the video. It's interesting that I bought this picture from Myanmar, formerly Burma. This is a real Flemish embroidery. You can see in the inscription that it was really made in Belgium and I bought it in Brussels. Here you can see some very simple objects. This is a bag of sugar. This is a little paper ice cream cup. These are disposable napkins and disposable tablecloths that I found in Italy. We were in the city of Sorrento and happened to be in a restaurant called Mona Lisa. Here, by the way, you can see its name, Mona Lisa Sorrento. And when we stopped there and went to this restaurant, I just got speechless because the tables were covered with these tablecloths. It says here, restaurant Mona Lisa Sorrento. There were napkins like that, one on the tables. There were plates with the logo, the Mona Lisa.
And when the waiter approached us, my husband, of course, could not resist telling him the story of my collection and even showed him photos on his phone. The manager of this restaurant immediately came up to us, waiters from other tables, and everyone began to look at my collection, and they immediately started bringing these small objects to me. Well, that was also something to remember. This is interesting too. Look, see, this is a poster. It depicts Mona Lisa holding a bottle of tomato sauce and it says, another Italian master. I first saw it at a local fruit and veggie shop. I then went to the saleswoman and asked her to sell me this poster, but she said that she could not sell it to me, but she would order another one and took my phone number. Of course, to be honest, I didn't really expect that she would call me, but she called me in two weeks. I went to the store and she gave me two posters. I wanted to pay her, but she didn't take any money from me. This collection has really brought me together with interesting people who helped me out a lot. Faina, is there anything in your collection of real collectible value or are they mainly of sentimental value? There are different things here. Jewelry is not expensive. This is a set of pendants. They all open up. The only thing that can be of value here is the painting of Mona Lisa on a shelf. See, it even has the name of the artist here. I honestly don't even know who it is. I bought it in Prague. It is very beautifully painted. Actually, I never wear things from my collection, especially with regard to jewellery. But I wore this pendant several times. I like it very much, and it probably represents some value. Look, these are dry, real dry leaves, and the images of portraits, one, two, and three, are printed on them. Those things are probably not too expensive. And here are the coins, which were minted in Neo. I don't even know the correct pronunciation of it. The place is in New Zealand. You can see it on the other side, that it is a real coin with a picture of Elizabeth II on it. There are three Mona Lisas depicted on the coins. One is from the Louvre, the second is from Prada Museum, which we talked about earlier, and the third is the so-called Arlsworth, and now it is called the early version of the Mona Lisa. There is evidence that this is an early work of Leonardo da Vinci, but of course I'm not going to talk about this today. This is, this is a separate story and it takes quite a long time. Anyone interested can contact me and I will tell you all about it. Here are two more coins. They're expensive and collectible. These are the other two coins. Do you mean to say expensive or inexpensive? <laughs> expensive. This is called the Mona Lisa Sisters. Here again is the Louvre painting and the painting from Prada. See, they have two stones here. This one is ruby, but this one is a sapphire. On the back you can also see that this is indeed a coin issued in Fiji. It is also a Commonwealth country, so it depicts Elizabeth II. I would also like to draw your attention to this ball. It's a snowball and it's a musical one. Because of this ball, I almost missed my plane one day. I bought it in America and I decided to pack it in my luggage so that it would not break. But when I was going through customs, I was immediately stopped and the customs officer asked if I was taking a snowball with me in my hand luggage. I answered yes, I was very surprised why they asked me about this. But it turned out that it contained more liquid that can be taken on board and I was offered two options. 
The first was to leave the globe at customs, and the second was to leave customs, go back and stand in line, and pack the ball separately and send it with the other luggage. And this is actually what I did, spending about 40 extra minutes doing that. But, thank God, I had enough time for this, and then in Melbourne, I received this musical globe in a special compartment of non-standard luggage. Для этого и потом в Мельбурне уже я этот шар получила в специальном отделении, где были нестандартные грузы. Вот интересно еще вот эта вот фигурка. Это японская this фигурка. Здесь изображение очищения Моны. This is a Japanese Её figurine. It depicts the theft of the Mona Lisa. It was stolen from the Louvre in 1911. And then the story is very interesting and quite long. A criminal story with very interesting details. But I won't talk about this today. This is a separate story. Конечно, собирая эту коллекцию, я стала интересоваться Леонардо. Как автор этой картины, но кроме того, я очень сильно заинтересовалась историей модели. Я стала интересоваться в Леонардо как автором этой картины. Но я тоже очень сильно заинтересовалась в истории модели, допустим, в этой картине. Perhaps only a few people know that the Louvre is visited by 8 to 9 million people every year. 80% of visitors, tourists, come to Louvre to look at the painting of Leonardo. Already, when you enter the Louvre, at the very entrance you will see a sign in the direction of the Grand Gallery where the portrait of Mona Lisa is located. You walk in and a crowd of people stands in front of the portrait. It is impossible to come close and look at the painting. And many visitors get disappointed because the picture is so small. It's only 77 by 53 centimeters in size. I also would like to say there are other paintings of the Renaissance which are exhibited in this room. Ironically, just opposite Mona Lisa, on the opposite side, there's a painting by Paolo Veronese, Marriage in Cannes. This is the largest painting in the Louvre. Its size is about 10 by 6.5 meters, and there may be only two or three people standing next to it. I just want to say that the value of a painting is not expressed by its size. Whilst building this collection, I became interested in the model herself, but not as a star or some kind of brand. I was curious to know her as a woman, depicted in Leonardo's painting, who she really was. She was a living, real woman who was sitting in front of the, of the author whom he painted. Back then, I only knew one thing about her, and that her name was Lisa La Jaconda, and that she was the wife of Francesco La Jaconda, a merchant, a silk merchant. When I learned different facts about Mona Lisa's life, my husband and I went to the city of Florence, where Mona Lisa was born, lived and grew up. I knew the address of the house where Mona Lisa was allegedly born. We came to a street called Vestuza. It turned out to be a very narrow, dirty, garbage-filled street. The houses were so old, not a single living soul was around, and we were ready to turn back because it was getting a bit scary, but we nevertheless decided to reach the appointed house, and when we arrived, we saw the house was at least 500 years old. The house was several floors high, metal bars on the windows, but nothing said that Mona Lisa once lived there. I went to the other side. The house was standing at the corner and the street was very, very narrow, about two meters wide. I looked up and suddenly I saw it. Can you see it in this photo? A little brass plaque at the level of the first floor. You can see I look very happy in this photo. After all, we found this house and you see the house itself is very old and covered in graffiti. When I began to learn about Mona Lisa, I learned very interesting and amazing story about her and her childhood, her youth and her married life. She had five children. I also visited the place where she and her family were buried. But I won't talk about this now because, again, the story is very long and a completely different one.
Well, you see here, I have a collection of different small pictures that are intended for a dollhouse. I made such a room in order to somehow reflect her life. The clock on the calendar are right here, and here are the badges. This is the limited edition collection from Disneyland. This is the rarest of them because only 500 of them were produced. There are about 1,000 here, but they're all limited editions. Вот это самая из них редкая, потому что ее всего выпущено 500 штук. Здесь где-то порядка тысячи, но они все лимитированные издания. Christmas decorations. Lisa herself. This is Leonardo. This one is broken, but I kept it anyway. The portrait is also a Christmas tree toy. Тоже елочная игрушка. Ha! Huh. I forgot to tell you about these two things. You see, here is a collection of small pictures. They were drawn by a young Belgian artist, Katja Balikova. She sent me all her work. And as you can see, there are a lot of pictures of Mona Lisa with a cat. Because, because in his notes, Leonardo mentioned Madonna with a cat. These are all her pictures. This one is made in the style of Gustav Густава Климта, ну это какая-то восточная красавица, плачущая тоже. Fina, I've always wanted to know why she called Mona Lisa. I assume her name was Lisa, but what does Mona mean? Mona is short for Madonna. Madonna is my lady. Так, если перевести это на английский язык, постепенно Мадонна перешла в Дону которая должна была писаться с дабл Н, с двумя Н. И постепенно ошибка была сделана, и стала писаться Мона с одним Н, Лиза. Вот еще, вот это, смотрите. Here is something else. I even have a certificate of authenticity. This picture was painted by an American artist, Richard Krauss. The painting is called In Divine Hands Now. See, she's holding two dogs in her arms. These are dash hounds that belong to the artist and he loved them very much. Over time, these dogs died and the artist painted them in the hands of Mona Lisa and signed In Divine Hands Now, which means that to him, the sacred hands are not the hands of God, God, not the hands of someone else, Jesus Christ, for example, but Lisa Gerardini. Here's another one. I wanted to show you a sari. It is a real Indian sari and has Mona Lisa on the back. Here is food, here is coffee, chocolate tea. This is where coffee was once stored. By the way, I bought this wine in a shop at a museum in Sorrento, which I told you about. This wine is from Sorrento. It is called Mona Lisa Sorrento. Here are the clothes. I said I only wore one pendant, but I also wore this scarf. This is the real Dolce Cabana. It depicts the Mona Lisa. Какой у вас самый дорогой экспонат коллекции вы считаете? Collectible value. Well, now we will move to another room, and there we will talk about other exhibits, including the most expensive one. То есть, когда вашу коллекцию похитят, вы по крайней мере будете об этом знать, находясь на каком-то расстоянии. То есть это вас успокаивает, что вы узнаете об этом первое. А вы тоже меня очень сильно успокаиваете. Ну, не случайно же я спрашиваю, что самое дорогое, потому что вынести всю коллекцию будет просто невозможно за один okay. раз, поэтому люди должны знать, чему уделить внимание. Хорошо, Саша, смотрите. 
Look, if we're talking well, about price, then probably this one and the other one in the corner would be of most interest. Yes, this one here. She's from the Ladro collection. Ladro is a Spanish company that makes porcelain figurines. They stopped producing the figurines in 1980. That is 40 years ago and it was very difficult for me to get it. But I bought it anyway. This is the collection of Vando Paltzman. Here, every little thing has its own purpose. This is a little jar. And this one here, it's got a little removable lid. This is this one's for the cookies. This is a mug. These two figurines are salt shaker and pepper shaker. The figurine itself is a salt shaker and the frame is a pepper shaker. Here's a kettle and a vase. These are all the items that belong to this collection. This is also Van Dorp Peltzman. And there are only two things here, a cup and a plate. I like those ones too. They're also quite expensive things. This is called a trinket box. This is Limoges, a French porcelain firm. But they're all completely different. There are no identical plates here. All are different in size. If you ask which exhibits in my collection are my favorite, then it, the, it's these dolls here. You can see Barbie here. The company has released a collectible Mona Lisa. And this is a company called Madame Alexander Dolls. This is an American company that also produces dolls and they have a series of dolls of famous people. Men and women, this doll is Madame Alexander's Mona Lisa. My husband ordered this figurine from a man who makes these customized portraits. This doll is handmade too. This doll here was quite expensive to buy because the hair on this doll is real human hair, not synthetic. It was handmade by a woman. You can see a very cute doll here. It's very funny and it is called Little Leonardo. Here is her certificate. But here's what's very interesting. There's a small mistake here. You can see that the brush is tied to the left hand. It is known that Leonardo was left-handed, but Leonardo was not left-handed. He was ambidextrous. He did write most of his notes with his left hand, but paintings, especially oil paintings, he painted with his right hand. You see there's a mistake here and the brush is tied to his left hand. This is a very interesting work. This is the Nutcracker. It is made in Germany. It is very nicely done. See, it's made of wood and has very pretty clothes. He's holding a portrait and a drawing tube with canvases. I love this one. 
Here are the matryoshka dolls. These are Russian nesting dolls. This was made especially for me. When we were wandering around Russia, we were on the river Volga and ended up in the village called Mandrogi. And whilst we were there, artists from all over Russia gathered and they were sitting and painting some wooden things right in front of the tourists. Amongst them was one artist, her name was Valentina Kajaniva. On her table, there were eggs like this with different Portraits. But Mona Lisa was not there, and the lady promised me that she would paint an egg especially for us. We left our contact details with her, and in a few months this egg arrived. You see here is her autograph, VK, Valentina Kajaniva. In 2016 she painted it and sent it to me. And here is my favourite thing, the dollhouse. I have already said that I love dolls very much. Here I combined my love of dolls with my love for Leonardo da Vinci. This house does not belong to my collection. It belongs to the biography of Leonardo's life. It depicts his life. And inside you can see him in the middle of his house. He sits there and paints his Lisa. And so here I depict the life of Leonardo. I show all areas of his interests. This is absolutely unique. You did this all by yourself? Is it all handmade? Well, the house, of course, I did not do all by myself. But the furnishings and the inside, all of it is yours? Yes. Here I pasted the wallpaper, made the plat bands over there. My husband helped me a little too. While making this house, I did a lot of research on what the house looked like in the Middle Ages. And of course, Leonardo never had such a big house. Only in the last years of his life, from 1516 to 1519, he lived in France under King Francis, who gave him a present, a castle near Amboise. This is a real photo of this castle. As you can see, it does not look very much like my dollhouse, but I did not set myself the goal of making a copy of Leonardo's house. I just wanted to style the house in a way that displays all the activities that Leonardo, as an artist, a painter, a scientist, an architect, liked to do, to show off his life, his friends. He had his own workshop where the master taught his students. There are a lot of animals here, as you can see. Leonardo was very fond of animals. He just idolized all of them, from horses to all sorts of insects. Farina, going back to your Mona Lisa collection, what was your very first piece? It was very difficult for me to start a collection in Australia. It was not easy to find anything right here in Melbourne. Once when I was in a handcraft shop, I saw this embroidery. I needed something to occupy my mum. She spent her days at home and was feeling lonely. So I bought this embroidery for her and it was the very first exhibit in my collection. And now it is very dear to me for two reasons. Firstly, it is the memory of my mum and secondly, I remember it as my first exhibit. The very first thing that I bought in Australia. To be honest, Faina, I had no idea about your collection before this. Can I ask you, what was your intention in creating this video? Well, I want to say that I'm not pursuing a monetary goal by showing this collection. 
I just wanted to show it to people and for them to learn more about Leonardo and Mona Lisa herself because I think it is a very interesting topic, just for fun. Is it because it was because of your love of art? Yes, I really love art. I really love paintings, especially of artists in the Renaissance period. Thank you very much, and I have no doubt it will generate great interest. Well, if anyone is interested, they can contact me and I can tell many more stories about Leonardo himself, about Lisa Gerardini, about the stealing of the Mona Lisa painting from the Louvre, about the early version of the Leonardo painting, which I also saw. The painting was exhibited for the first time in Singapore in 2015, and we happened to be in Singapore just at that time, and so I saw the exhibition. So for anyone who's interested, please like us on Facebook. Like, but also ask questions for future episodes as I will be happy to shoot and talk about this amazing collection.